Hi, myself Krishna Rudrapal, a research scholar, and I am working under Dr. Oyan Rai Choudhury at the Material Science Center of IIT Kharagpur. This is Functional Nanomaterials and Thin Film Lab. Here we do work on the thin film based devices in the application of opto, electro, memory, or sensing devices. And now I am in front of the R sputtering system. Through this video, I will going I am going to demonstrate you the operation of the sputtering system. It is actually a very important physical vapor deposition system which is widely used in academia and industry for metal and, it, and its oxide deposition. It operates on the working principle of striking and higher energetic ions onto a target material and when it erodes the material and a substrate place onto the part, it creates a thin layer of it. So I have kept the, the video in two parts. In first part, I will introduce you all the parts of the instrument and then through a deposition of a thin film, I will show you how it is operated in its standard operating system. I hope this video will help you to understand how the sputtering working principle is executed through this system and how we can grow a thin and uniform layer for our application. So let me introduce you important parts of the system. So broadly there are the gas unit part which consists of the three gases argon oxygen and nitrogen and then this is the our sputter system where the actual deposition occurs. This is the controlling unit where the power, temperature and also the rotation controller unit is there. And then next comes this. This is the vacuum system which is responsible for evacuating the chamber. And on the back of it, we have a chair unit which supplies the chilled water to the, to the guns and to the substrate holder and also to the, our vacuum unit system. So in the gas unit system, we have three cylinders for three different gases. One is the oxygen and then is the argon and then is the nitrogen gas. So these two gases we use for the actual deposition system. So oxygen is used while doing a, a, a reactive sputtering deposition and argon is required to, to sputter the system. So we have to always supply the argon gases. And this nitrogen gases, we use it for venting the system. So these gases are passed through the regulator and then the gases comes through the pipe and through the mass flow controller, it enters into the cham chamber. And we have two mass flow controller. One is for the argon and another is for the oxygen. We don't have any mass flow controller for the nitrogen because for the venting purpose, we don't need that much control. And through these buttons, we control the outflow of the gases so that we can maintain a particular ratio for our deposition system. And then at the bottom, we have the power sources. So first, this is the DC power source, which is mostly or, 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 or frequently used for the uh, metal targets and we have two power sources for RF. We use 13.56 megahertz of frequency and because at that frequency the power cannot be directly transferred to the to the output or to the load because of the mismatch of the impedances we need to have to connect a matching network. So this is placed at, at this part. So we have two matching network for these two RF sources. What it does, it matches the impedance of the target with the source of this power so that the maximum power can be transferred from the source to our target or the load and we won't get any reflected back power. And on the bottom of this thing, this is a temperature controller unit, it connects. So our temperature heater coil is connected very close to the substrate so that while deposition we can heat up the substrate and and, and grow our film at a, at, at, at a desired temperature. So this is the temperature is controlled by this unit and this is the some switches. So these are two for the mass flow controller and this switch is to, to set the output from the DC sources. And then this is the controller for the substrate rotation. So this rotation helps us to grow a uniform film throughout the substrate. So this is controlled by this controller. And next, at the top, this is the main chamber unit 
and this is the part we see this is we call a gun where the target is connected by target I mean to say the material we want to deposit through this power cables and this is the shutter where we you know, close the uh, target output or the plasma from coming out from the target and on this is the you know, door where we load our substrate into the chamber this is a another venting needle valve so for venting from the atmospheric air we use this needle valve and then on top of it it comes a motor this is to rotate the substrate with this con with the controller and these are two uh, water lines in flow and flow to regulate the temperature around the substrate and this is the shutter for the substrate we will see this once we go inside into the chamber so now let's go to the inside of the chamber and understand each part of it at the inside of the chamber the spring leg structure is the heating coil which is responsible for heating the part and then at the bottom of it the groove you see there we we hold the substrate holder this also rotates with a controller and at the back of the substrate rotation holder we see a disc like structure this is the quartz crystal microbalance system this is used to monitor our film's thickness this is actually operates on the crystal operation it has its natural frequency of 6 megahertz whenever we deposit the material also deposits onto the crystal and its weight get increased and thus its natural frequency get reduced so by calculating the its natural frequency before and after the deposition we can correlate this parameter into the thickness of the system with the help of a software we do this and and this is the gun where the target material is attached so there the plasma is created with the help of a power source and the vacuum system the inside part of the gun we will see shortly to understand how the connection is made for this operation so this is the complete gun and this part is kept outside of the chamber we earlier saw that and you see there is also a scale which measures the substrate to target distance with the help of this screw we can maintain the distance at our required position and this is the part where which stays inside of the chamber I kept all the parts open to show you the inside parts so this is the inside part of the gun I kept it open now and I will attach parts one by one so that you understand how the power system is connected in the gun this is the where the power comes means the DC or RF source power comes it is attached to this power unit and this part is the ground unit so here so these two has to be separated so that they don't get shorted now here this is the outer ring magnets and this is the core another magnet the core and the outer ring are oppositely faced so if the outer magnets are south pole faced then the inner core will be the north pole faced thus a magnetic field creates which lines to from this to this north to south pole this magnetic field traps the electrons onto it and also because of this magnetic field direction electron path is become elliptical one so by this way the electrons mean free path get increased and more number of ionization happens from argon to argon plus and because these electrons are mostly surrounded this part and gets most of the energy in this path the most of the argons get ionized at this area only and also most of the sputter happens in this part only now we will attach the target onto the gun so first we will use a back plate and on top of it we will attach the target so that the target material does not contaminate so I have attached it and I will take a tungsten target for a demonstration purpose so this will hold it on top of this 
there is a group with the help of the group will attach it and then with the help of this gasket and this screw will attach it while tightening the screw we should be careful that we should not tighten it very tightly and you have to see whether where it you know, it is uniformly tightened all over the disc area or not the heat dissipation issue mainly arises when we use the oxide target because the oxide targets are not good heat conductor so to mitigate this heat dissipation issue for the oxide target we take number of steps so first step is we always pass through a you know, chilled water through the target to dissipate the heat and the next part is when we use the oxide target this is the tungsten oxide target at the back of it we use a copper back plate and the target material is attached to the back plate with a silver paste or a indium paste because these are the good heat conductor so and the in third step to mitigate this heat dissipation we also increase the rf source very slowly so that it gets enough time to dissipate the heat if we don't follow this process very carefully then the target may break and this is quite often for a oxide target deposition we also saw this kind of cracking onto the target and i would like to show you a sample of the same you see this is the another tungsten oxide target material and there is a crack from the two starts from one end and goes till to the other end and this is completely broke from the surface to the bottom of the bottom of the target so this is why the heat dissipation is very important for a oxide material and we have to be very careful while handling this oxide target material now we have connected the uh, target material onto the cathode part so there we see that this tungsten target has been used for many number of depositions so we see certain pattern onto the target at this part we see a ring like structure where most of the sputter occurs so while explaining the magnetic position i explained you that how the magnetic field is aligned and because of this magnetic field most of the argon ionization occurs at this area only that's why most of the sputter occurred in this zone and we see there is a you know, group structure of the, from the, on, onto the target and also we do see at this outer part there is you know, not much sputtering happened this is important because as hold the, the gasket and the target all the parts are connected to the power source so if we keep it open then sputter can happen from all over the surface area but we don't want to sputter this steel material so to cover this steel material and also you know, to specifically sputter out the target material we will attach this so you see in the holder this structure you know, hinders the argon ion plus to sputter out material from this gasket material so we will attach it now while attaching it we have to be careful because the outer part is at the connected to the ground and the inner part is connected at the cathode or the power source so we should not make it a short so and also it is there it is recommended that we have to keep at 2 mm distance from the target to this part so first we will make it a short connection and then we will make a half rotation on the opposite direction so that there is a 2 mm distance from the target to this uh, funnel the half rotation is done now with the help of this ring we will lock it so now the argon plus will only see the target from the top and only our target material will get sputtered and through this shutter we will control when we want to deposit 
onto our substrate and when we don't want. Now I will show you how we attach the substrate onto the holder. So this is the clean substrate I kept here. This is platinum coated silica substrate and I will attach the substrate onto the holder. So I can use a double sided tape at the bottom of the substrate to attach it. This works very well for a room temperature deposition. But for a high temperature deposition, we need to use another method like a silver paste at the bottom of the substrate. Some other, sometime while deposition, we may need to mask certain part of the, of the substrate. This can be done by this clip. So we can use the clip to attach and also to use as a mask. So this way the clip, there will be no deposition at the clipped part and we can access the substrate. This is useful some for the metallic substrate when we want to use it as a bottom electrode for air for electrical characterization. And also sometime we may, we may need to use a pattern deposition. So this is done by this by this metal shadow mask. Here you see metal shadow mask. A pattern is already made there. So and this is a made of nickel material. This is a plate at the back of it there is a magnet placed so the magnet can attract this nickel metal shadow mask and thus it can attach our substrate so we will hold the substrate at the middle of the plate and then carefully we will put the mask onto the substrate we have to be careful because it attracts the magnet. Yeah, so this way our substrate is attached to the plate. Now with the help of this clip, we will connect it to the holder and with the help of a groove in the chamber, we will hold it there. So these are the different ways our substrate can be attached to the holder. So at the right hand side of the chamber, this is the evacuation system and it consists of the two pumps one is the mechanical pump is a rotary pump which is responsible to evacuate till 10 to the power minus 3 millibar pressure from atmospheric pressure and this is the diffusion pump which is responsible to take the pressure from 10 to the power minus 3 millibar to 10 to the power minus 6 millibar and this is the two switches for rotary pump and diffusion pump and these two are the two display unit to show the pressure from the penny and pirani gauge and through this butterfly valve we connect the rotary pump to the diffusion pump or to the chamber whenever we require to we will show you how this is maintained while we show the actual deposition at the back of the evacuation system, this is the chiller unit which is responsible to flow a chilled water through the, through the pipe to the different guns, to the substrate and also to the diffusion pump. So by now, the, all the important parts are briefly introduced to you. Now next we will move to the actual deposition. So before we start the deposition, we have to first entry to the logbook and we have a soft copy of the logbook so we will enter all the detailed deposition parameters onto it and then also on the hard copy so after making entry to this logbook we will start the deposition so first we will power up the system and then we will do process one by one first we will power up the MCD of the UPS and then switch on the UPS and one by one all the switches I will switch it on so first we will switch on the rotary pump we will switch on the controller unit so now this rotary pump is on 
and first we will evacuate this division pump chamber. So we have to open this butterfly valve. Then the rotary pump is connected to the chamber of the diffusion pump. This is very important for a diffusion pump because diffusion pump, pump works on the principle of the jet creation from the vaporized oil. So if we don't evacuate the diffusion pump chamber before heating up the oil, then the oil will burn with the atmospheric oxygen and this will destroy the, our your diffusion pump's oil. So before turning on the diffusion pump, we have to evacuate the chamber and this is done by this rotary pump. So when the pressure reaches to the minus 10 to the power minus 3 millibar pressure, then only we will turn on the diffusion pump. So till then we will wait for few minutes. Now the braking pressure has reached to the 10 to the power minus 3 millibar of pressure. So the braking pressure means the pressure of the diffusion pump chamber. So now we are ready to turn on the diffusion pump. So we will do that. So this will power up the system the diffusion pump. That means now the diffusion oil, pump oil will start to heat up. And it takes around 45 to 50 minutes to fully heat up. So this time we can prepare our substrate. That means we can clean our substrate and load onto the chamber and evacuate the chamber till to the power minus 3 level of pressure. So we will utilize this time for that purpose. So the chamber is in vacuum, vacuum condition now. So to load the substrate, we first bend, we have to bend it. So we will just supply the nitrogen gas from the cylinder, open the mouth and then we will turn on the regulator and then through this ball valve we will pass the nitrogen gas onto the chamber to vent it and we have to open this valve so that when gas passes onto the chamber it doesn't create high pressure onto the chamber so once the chamber comes to the atmospheric pressure this door will automatically open and now after that we will load our substrate. Now the chamber inside pressure has come to the atmospheric pressure. Now we will load our substrate. I have already cleaned my substrate and attached with the help of a clip. So now I am ready to load our substrate onto the chamber. Open the door. And then very carefully we load it. I kept the substrate upside down and then with the help of this group I load it. Once it's loaded, then I will close the door. So after loading the substrate holder, I will lock the door. and we will start roughing the chamber. So to rough the chamber, that means to evacuate the chamber till 10 to the power minus 3 millibar pressure, so we will first close the baking valve. So now we will connect our rotary pump to the chamber. So this is done by this roughing valve. So we will open this valve. So now this rotary pump is connected for this valve to the chamber. So now it will evacuate till 10 to the minus 3 millibar of pressure. So you wait by then. So now the wrapping pressure, that means the chamber pressure has reached to the 10 to the minus 3 millibar of pressure and also we have passed enough time to heat up the division pump oil. So now we are ready to to open the chamber for high vacuum pump. So for that, we have to first pour liquid nitrogen at the back of a cylinder. This liquid nitrogen works to trap the oil so that it does not 
go to the chamber and contaminate our deposition. So now we will pour the, pour the liquid nitrogen onto the cylinder and then we will turn on the uh, high vacuum valve to connect to the chamber. Here we will close this wrapping valve to disconnect the chamber from the rotary pump. And then we will open the backing valve. And then we will open this high vacuum valve. So this way now the chamber is connected to the diffusion pump and at the back of the diffusion pump this rotary pump is connected. Now the, at the inside of the diffusion pump chamber the mechanical structure is maintained in such a way that it converts this oil vapor into a jet and when the jet enters from center to the uh, wall it, it transfers its momentum to the air molecule and thus the air molecule from the top part comes down to the bottom part and the rotary pump takes out the air molecule and thus the pressure gets down and it can do this till it reaches to the 10 to the power minus 6 millibar of pressure and at the wall of the chamber, division pump chamber the chilled water is passed through so that the wall is maintained at low temperature so that the vaporized oil can be condensed into a liquid form and again goes back to its to the bottom stage then again it heats up and forms a vapor and then jet then again condenses and this cycle goes on this way we get a very low pressure and for this chamber it takes more than an hour to go to the 10 to the minus 6 millibar of pressure so we will meet after the after some time when the pressure reaches to the 10 to the minus 6 level now we are back after an hour break and now we have to check what is the pressure risk now? So we we'll switch on the filling gauge and we see the pressure is below 4.0 to the minus 6. So now we can start our deposition. So we'll switch off the filling gauge and turn on the filling gauge to see the pressure. So because we will do the deposition at 300 degrees Celsius and it will reach some time to reach to the set temperature so we will first switch on the temperature controller and by the time the temperature rises to 300 degrees celsius we will do the other part so we will first switch on the temperature controller to the and we will set around 10 minutes of time to go to the to reach to the 300 degrees Celsius and then I will do deposition for 30 minutes but I will keep the you know, program for one hour to stay there at 300 degrees Celsius but once my deposition is over I can stop the uh, temp you know, temperature through the controller. So I will do the setting. There is the first sweep one, so there I will set to 300, so now it is 300 degrees Celsius, so I want to reach at 300 degrees Celsius, let us say around 15 minutes, so I will set it so, so in 15 minutes it will reach to the 300 degrees Celsius, this is the output power percentage, I can keep it to 100% and then I want to stay at the 300 degrees Celsius for an hour maybe. So it will stay for one hour and output will be there for 100% and then for all other parameter I will keep it to zero. It is already there in zero. So no issue. So all other points are kept to zero. Now the, as the program is set, now I will run the program. So I will click and hold at this up button. Yeah. So now the green light will show the, my set temperature and the red light is the actual temperature at the substrate reading. So by the time the temperature reaches, I will do the other processes. And before switching on the power, I will you know, start the gas flow. 
so for my deposition i want 90% of argon flow and 10% of oxygen flow and i am using here gallium oxide target material and so i will start the gas flow both the gases are coming out from the gas cylinders now i start on both of the mfcs and i will set the argon for 10 ccm so the set point then and oxygen i will set it to 1 ccm so now we'll turn this to ball okay ball bar okay and then with the help of this butterfly valve and this gate valve i will maintain the pressure of wrapping to 6.6 in the middle bar minus 3 millibar that is roughly around 5 ml of pressure this valve is for the coarse control and this you can use it for fine control so you see it is almost around 6.6 to the minus 3 of millibar and i want that pressure to be maintained and now as the pressure is adjusted so now i am ready to start switching on the power so now okay before switching on the power i want the shaft to target distance to be 10 cm And now it is set to no sorry I want seven centimeter. And now it is set to ten centimeter. So I will set the distance. So this can be done by this way. So with the help of the scale, I will adjust the distance. Here distance from subject to target. Yeah. So now it is set to. Seven centimeter. Click check. So now the gun one is connected to the to this power source. So before switching on the RF source, I will switch on the matching network. It is here. And it is set to auto control, so it will automatically match the input impedance of the source to the target gun. Now I will turn on the power source, RF source. And I will first click on the RF output on. Yeah. Now whatever power I apply, it will directly load it to the gun. And with the help of this knob, I will slowly increase the power. Remember, I earlier also mentioned that the importance of slowly increasing the power, and I want the deposition to happen at 50 watt. So I reach its point, and by the time it reaches to the 50 watt power, we can see the plasma also. Now I have reached to the power of 30 watt, and I can already see the plasma has already striking. So you can see the plasma. So you can consider this sputtering as a pre-sputtering process, and we do this pre-sputtering before the actual deposition all the time. And the the point you see, we have covered the substrate with a with this with this shutter, and when we want the actual deposition, then we open this shutter. We will continue to increase the power till 50 watt. So now I have reached to the 50 watt of power. And it took around 10 minutes of time. And by the time I reached to the power, the piece puttering is also done. I broke piece putter for 10 minutes to clean up target surface. So now I am ready for my actual deposition. I want to rotate the substrate holder throughout the deposition. So I turn the rotation of the substrate holder now. So there I will set a 20 RPM of rotation, and I will set it. Click on the RPM. The set of twenty enter and by clicking it. No.
now the subset folder is rotating and now it's time to start the QCM. So to start the QCM, I will I am going to use the STM software and there I will enter the materials information like density and Z ratio and tooling factor. So this I already written there and now I am ready to start this QCM. So I will go start this QCM and also open the substrate starter at the same time. So now as you can see the plasma is directly falling onto the substrate and also the substrate is rotating at 20 rpm speed and I want my deposition to occur for 30 minutes so after 30 minutes I will stop the deposition and also the QCM and I will see the further thickness comes so as our deposition is running for 30 minutes by the time I want to share you some of the important parameters which we need to consider before starting a deposition or before optimizing a deposition so one first important thing is the power so the before using the desired power we have to take care of the maximum power is recommended by the supplier or the target material we should not go beyond that then it will be risky for the target material it may break down so this we have to be take care for and also the increasing power will increase the deposition rate so this part we have to be taken care of and then the next important parameter is the working pressure inside the chamber while deposition so as we increase the pressure more number of ions or argon ions are present inside the chamber so this increases the plasma and thus the deposition rate increases and if we in keep increasing the working pressure because more number of ions are there, more scattering happens. So after certain amount of pressure, again the deposition rate goes down. So we have to be take care about these parameters while optimizing our parameters. Then the most important parameter also comes the target to substrate distance. So as we reduce the target to substrate distance, the deposition rate increases because it does not scatter more. So we can set a distance accordingly at our required position and also we have to take care about the argon to oxygen ratio also because more number of oxygen will make it more oxide filled and then the heating part so heating part will decide mostly the crystallinity of the material so we have to set our required temperature according to our crystallinity requirement so these are the few more important parameters. I would also like to share some of the precautions we have to take, in, take care when using the diffusion pump. So as we know we heat up the diffusion pump oil, we should not heat up without evacuating the chamber. And also after heating up the diffusion pump oil, we should not connect this, this diffusion pump directly to the atmospheric pressure. That means only after evacuating the chamber to 10 to the minus 3 millibar pressure only we can connect this chamber to the diffusion pump chamber and also we should not open this wrapping and vacuum bulb at the same time then the gas can from the chamber can directly to come to the diffusion pump chamber so we should avoid this thing so now the 30 degree deposition is done so we will shut the substrate shutter and also stop the QCM software. So it is done. Shutter is closed. And now we can stop the temperature controller as well. So this is done. And now as the deposition is already done, so we can also stop the uh, substrate rotator. So this is excellent. Power off. Now we don't shut down the gas flow because the power is still on. So we will slowly reduce the power and once the power is at 0 watt then we will we'll close the gas flow. So we will slowly slowly reduce the power. So one unit of power down and wait for few seconds and next again one unit of power down. So this will we'll reach to the 0 watt of power. Okay. So then the power is at 0 watt so I will switch off the power off and then this also 
power of and I will also switch turn off the matching network. Now I am ready to close the gas flow. So I will first close this two bulb and then the high vacuum bulb will close and now I can turn off the diffusion pump. And also this gate bulb, I will keep it open. But now our substrate is at 153 degree Celsius. I can only open the substrate once it reaches below the 100 degree Celsius. So I will wait a few more time. I will also close the power of two MFCs. Now the temperature is below 100 degree Celsius and now we are ready to take out our substrate from the chamber. So to do that, we will vent the chamber with the nitrogen gas. So now the temperature is below 50 degree Celsius. So now we can take out our substrate from the chamber. But before that, we have to vent the, vent the chamber to atmospheric pressure. So we will do this by the nitrogen gas flow. So this ball valve, we wait for few seconds to increase the atmospheric pressure. And then we keep it out. Yes. So now we are ready. Now to take out the substrate, we we'll close the valve. So we we'll turn on the wrapping valve. We will see our deposition. We expect a contrast between the bottom of the clip and the other parts. It is a very thin film, and my naked eye I can see the clear contrast, but it may not be very clear in the camera. But anyway, we have different substrates to show you how the clip part and other part looks like. So these are the bigger substrate, and you see. At this part we have used the clip and other parts there is a deposition. So this and this part is covered by two clips and this blue color film is shown here. So these are other substrates where the deposition is done. With this now I end up the demonstration. I hope this helps you to familiarize with the RF sputtering system. Thank you.